choice is all up to you too, too many things don't know what to do Speak your mind and you won't get judged If, if it kicks off you won't hold no grudges What? Come online, come online, come online. CSI, CSI come, come online, come online CSI, CSI Your choice is all up to you Too many things don't know Welcome to CSI My name is Lucia Today we'll talk about childcare Today we have Maria Gloria Antonio who is a childcare provider and she lives in, in Dublin and will know a little bit more how is to be a childcare provider or how is to be a childcare educator. Maria, welcome. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay. So Maria, you where are you from? Originally I'm from Angola. Okay. Yeah. And how long are you in Ireland? Yeah, uh, 22 years. 22 years, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you were childcare. How did you start? Um, basically, um, after my living cert, I always wanted to do business. So I went into Green Hills College and I did business studies. During the year, um, I wasn't really feeling the, you know, the interest to continue. So but I had to continue by doing work experience. I attended Leisureplex. And in Leisure Brex, they placed me in the kids' zone uh, because they didn't have the, the area of the business sector. And when I started, you know, every day going in, uh, I started to enjoy interacting with the children, playing games. And actually, the manager actually said to me, Why don't you do childcare? And I was just like, I don't think so, but I took it on board. And I went into college, in Inchico College. I did childcare and I did my work experience in Giraffe. And since then, I've been working in childcare. Wow, and how long has that been? Uh, it would be almost 10 years actually. Yeah, wow, amazing. Years, yeah. That is a life um, long experience in yeah. childcare. Yeah. Okay, so um, when you work in the leisure plex, you said, yeah. that was a work experience that you did? Yes and you work with children what age um, were it they? was actually um there was no age uh, limit because it, leisure plex is the entertainment uh, center for uh, you know families so um you know you have up to babies up to 12 years old sometimes you know even 16 to go in with the younger siblings so i was basically just you know supervising them creating activities with them and just making sure they're having fun. Okay, so when you went there, you actually were going to, you know, hoping to do work experience as a business um, yes. student, yeah. but then they put you on the childcare. How did you feel about that transition? Because it wasn't your decision. Yeah, at first I was, um, okay, no, I, I think, um, you know, this is not for me, I don't have, but because I was towards the end of my course, and my uh, was like my tutor from college said you're just gonna have maybe two weeks of it so even if you don't go ahead with it you know, don't worry about it once you finish your two weeks you should be fine okay and yet you are you know still working the yes, childcare yeah, yeah. Uh, surely because you enjoyed it yeah oh yeah I, I, I loved it yeah okay so yeah. what made be enjoyable it just basically being with the children and you know seeing them happy mm -hmm. you know enjoying and I kind of was trying to remember how I was being a child and just having the fun and not having nothing to worry about and just seeing them smile, you know. Okay, so did you do just the two weeks in Leisure Plex or did you continue? Do you have more No, time just there? the two weeks because we're just part of the business studies course. Okay, and while you were there in work experience, what um, was that? Uh, every day was it different things that you had to do or it was just in a specific area that you you know with the children uh, no it was actually like um kind of the same just supervising them but uh, because i started to like i think it was my third day i went home and started to you know create activities so when i come in into the work placement i would do actually games with them according to the age groups and i started also um they have like birthday parties in Leisure Plex, so mm -hmm. I would organize the birthday parties as well. So, you know, having games according to the age groups as well, yeah. Okay, so for you to be a childcare and, and educator, what course must, must you have? Yes, yeah, so it's called uh, Childcare and it's run by the Early Childhood Education. 
Okay, and is it a level into that? Is yeah, like you can do a degree on it. You can also do a master's degree. But um, the government also decided like five years ago that you can, after the living cert, you can actually go into FITAC, which is level five up to level eight, but it's still the same qualification. Qualification, yes. okay, very good. Okay, I see, that's very good. And then, um, so once you finish your business degree, then you went straight to Inchicore or did you work somewhere else? Um, yeah, no, um, I, I had the summer off and that gave me time to, you know, to look for colleges in like for childcare, and it was actually some um, place that I got into in Intercor College because when you're doing the interviews, you they have to kind of see if you have any experiences. So once I said that I was working in um, Leisureplex, that's when they said, okay, you can start the college. Okay, very good. So yeah. it was actually, um, as, as you were working with them, those two weeks, it created not only a bond for the love of working with children, yeah. but you immediately act upon and go on to study. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so and how long did you study in Inchicore? It was a year um, for like, it was 2008, 2009. And then uh, I was actually invited to do my uh, next level but um, where I was working uh, as a work experience, they actually offered me a job. Okay. So I was in between, should I work full time or should I continue my studies? But at that moment, I chose just to, to, work. to work. And I think it was maybe during the years I studied in CMIT. Okay. online just to continue my um, qualification. To progress your qualification. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. And then after after that, um, when, after that, no, while you were in college in Inchicore, did you have to do also work experience? Oh yes, yeah, I did, yeah. Okay, yeah. where did you do? So I did in Giraffe. Oh, yeah. you did in Giraffe, in Giraffe yeah. okay. And is that where you worked as well, is it? Yeah, when th that's where they offered me the job, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And, and um, um, how do you feel that the you know the the setting in giraffe compared to the leisure plex? I know it's completely different. Yeah, settings, it's but a uh, very different. Yeah, basically, in le leisure plex, as I said, it was basically like a family entertainment. So all the age groups are all like basically in the one setting. But in giraffe, it's a center between say six months to twelve years old. So they have each room for each age group, and then they have also like the they have names. So for example, they have ECC, they all have preschoolers, they have Montessori. So it's really according to the age group. Okay, yeah. um, you were there to find their ECC, play school, and Montessori. Yeah. Is that the room that you put you know the kids in, or what is that? Yeah. So basically, each room has a name. So we have up to the baby room to the after school rooms. So, uh, like for example, after the baby, they will have the toddler group, which is two to three years old. And then we have also three to four, which is preschool. But now, uh, the last few years, the government decided to do two years of the ECC, because some children are not ready to go straight into co uh, to school okay. after four years. So now we're doing two years of ECC. So in each class, you have to have maybe two or three rooms between ECC 1 and ECC three, uh, 2. Yeah. And then there's Montessori. Now Montessori is, is kind of the same as ECC, but they will introduce more of um, like primary school education methods. And then after that, we also have the after school. So that's from five years up to 12 years. Okay, very good. So you still have a lot of contact with all different age, um, yes. you know, um, group, you know, while you're working there in, in school. And where are you working now at the moment? I'm working in a place called Mrs. Statis in Blancestown. Yeah, and that's, um, they provide from zero to 12, 12 years old. Zero to 12 years old. Yeah. Wow, very good. And where do you work? I'm working at the moment in Playgroup, which is, uh, two years to three, um, two years to three years, and it's also ECC one because the um, the first year is actually two years and eight months. Okay. So yeah, so it's a, it's a mixture of um, preschool and playgroup. Okay, very good. And is that the only the only uh, group of children you work with? 
No, it's basically when I was doing my work experience, they will actually put you in different rooms. So I worked in all the rooms. And then when you actually work and say you, you, have, you have your own room, uh, so I have my room is called playgroup. But because it's a shift kind of um, work, so rotation. you have to kind of um, take over somebody else's room when they're finished their shift. So you can be, say in the morning, you can be in your room, in the afternoon you can be in the baby room, you can be in the after school, you can be in the ECC too. So it's really depending on the shift that you're on. And also when staffs are sick or on holidays, so you have to cover each, you know, everybody else. Okay. Um, children are such a vulnerable um, members of, of our society. What are the implementation for creating a secure um, for the parents that are bringing their kids in the in the crash? Yeah. So we have policies and procedures, and they are guided from the HCC, from Tusla, and when they when we decide to open a crash, you have to implement those policies and procedures. We also have a booklet for parents that will actually read and make sure that not only they know what we do, but that they are they know that we are following guidelines from HCC, from Tusla, and um, we also have our own policies as well that we we can be able to communicate with parents that we're not only just there to babysit children, but we're there to, you know, to um, to Education. provide, no, not even educate, but to provide overall development. So we're there to motor the, the development of their social development, their physical development. So we're there to support their all, all, overall development. Wow, yeah. that's very good, yes, yeah. So um, a lot of people, they say that um, home is the first place where they where they are educated yeah. and school is a second yeah. obviously they're missing the gap there because you know you know the crash is in between do you feel yourself as being part of that progress of a child yes because not only like um we are m minding the children we are also having in communication with parents so for example if you put your child in the crash we are communication to the to the parents that we are doing the activities according to the curriculum for example we have a curriculum called ice and shelter so that curriculum is based on their health being their communication skills their thinking and exploring and it's basically activities that is not only like okay we're going to do for example cutting and water play but we actually asking the parents what do you do at home you know and we will continue to do that in crash and then we're introducing activities so that when they are in primary school they are already prepared for it and not only we the only difference between primary school and um, the crash is that we do it in playful manner so it's not really a structure it's not really a discipline it's basically on their it's child-led activities. Mm -hmm. So if a child wants to play with water play, we're not saying, okay, now we cannot do water play because it's dinner time. We have to allow the child to express themselves. So we're doing that and also we are supporting them. So you actually support individuality and yes. the choices that yeah. the children have. Yeah. And is that a fun, you know, that is a fundamental um, mm -hmm. support that you're doing to the yeah. child in their development. Yeah. Um, that um, a child that goes to crash, um, how long do you expect them to become independent or do they come already independent? No, um, because we have different rooms and um, you can see that every child, it's, they develop in their own stages. Mm -hmm. Like not every child is the same. There's children that come with different backgrounds, different education. As you said before, education comes from home. So we're not there to teach them a different education. We're just there to support. That's why uh, for a childcare educator, it's very important to have the communication with the parents. You know, we have a thing called identity and belonging, which is diversity. So when we are observing each child, we're not only you know, saying what can they not do or what can they do, but it's what they like to do. So we are including the activities with them, you know. So it's very important to not to uh, go by uh, the child and like a, as a group, 
but as an individual. Individual, yeah. Okay, because they good. grow different different stages. Like a child of two could be very independent because from home, they are teaching them from home, but another child could be four years old, but they still have their separation anxiety. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. We'll talk about that emotions in a little while. Um, you know, just going back a little bit, to, you know, to Tusla you mentioned there. They are the governing board uh, board um, for childcare, or is it, you know, is it Tusla? Which one? Uh, sorry. So we have HSC and we have Tusla. They actually work together as okay. a team. So the HSC is more for legally uh, matter to make sure that. Uh, in each room, we are actually implementing the policies and procedures, that the guidelines. And two slides more for the security of the child. For example, if we, while we are doing the activities, while we are minding that we are not harming the risk, we are putting the health and safety of each child at force. And, and also as well, they will check, for example, that everything that we learned in college, or the theory of childcare, it's not only just that was something that we learn, but it's actually we put in, into practice. Into practice. Yeah. Very good, very good. And then, and then for you as a childcare provider, um, is there anything like a special course that you have to do with Tusla as well or with HSC? Um, just because um, uh, regulations can change every every so often, so we no, don't have to do like a full course, but we have to update. So we'll have to do such such as so, uh, like food. Because we also have to do the dinners and the the food, so food handling. We we'll have to do the like childcare, security, fire safety. So just basically the courses we have to update that could be um, two years, three years. It's really depending if they change the regulations. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you need yeah. to update. And, yeah, yeah. So like the last time that we did was just after COVID. And uh, we had to change a lot of the regulations. Uh, we have pods now in the crashes, and we're not allowed to mix each room. So, for example, we have two to three staff in each room because, I, like, for example, I wouldn't be able to cover another pod because that's mixing. Mm -hmm. So, um, one person would do say the morning shift, then the other person would do the the second shift in the afternoon, and then the third person is just there to be covering lunches and breaks and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. that's that's very you know yeah. that that's very good that you are able to you know to comply you know with yeah. the, you know with the law. Do does the um, the crashes do they have um, to have cameras in place for parents? E that, yes, you know? some crashes do, some don't. But we we have in our in our crash because it's especially for um, accidents. Sometimes when you have, like in my group, we can have up to um, 12 children. So in our ratio is one to six. So I could be looking at six children and my other colleague can be looking at six children. But if she pops out, for example, um, for like five to 10 minutes, I'll have 12 by myself. So the cameras are there because obviously you only have two eyes. You can't be looking at 12 kids in the one place. So if there's an accident that happens, we have security that we can go back in the cameras and check what happened and we can have a, an accident report put in place. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Um, what about the diversity in, you know, in, the, in, the, in the crash facility? Do you have uh, m m you know, many children with different uh, nationalities or not? Yes, we have um, uh, even the staff. Uh, the staff, we have a lot of the staff are from different nationalities. And um, especially in the ECC rooms, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a free from government. The two years are free, are provided from the government. So you'll see the most community are diversity. And because of that, we will also find out different events from their own countries. And we will celebrate in the crashes. Like we had African Day, we celebrated that in the crash. And we also had the Chinese year, we had like we would ask as our parents to show you know to tell us when they have a special event from back home and we will in place as well to show the other children as well that it's okay to be different it's okay to have um to embrace their identity and belonging you know and that's mm -hmm. and that's one of the keys as well from the curriculum that we have to put into place that is not only about us as staff but it's about the children so even if the the child is singing, say, African songs, and we can actually 
put an activity in place that we can show the other children that the African music is important to that particular child. And when once we actually do that, you can see other children enjoying them as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yes, yes, children are very innocent and very yes, yes. very easily, you know, to be taught. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so just that uh, you mentioned about the you know the staff being also from a diverse um, yeah. you know background. Can anybody f outside yeah. Ireland with a certificate or a diploma in childcare come and work in Ireland? As? Yeah, um, it's basically more most in Europe qualifications, and we have staff that actually have degrees, like they're actually teachers in say in their country, say in Philippines, they're teachers. But because the here in Ireland is not it's not recognised, so they will go back say to the FITAC mm -hmm. and say they will have probably uh, level five or six, but in their country will actually be, say, a degree. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the same here in Ireland. Um, for example, if you have, say, level eight or a master's degree, could be in a certain country, they will, it's not actually the same. It's just because the regulations are in different. Each country. In each country, yes, they're different. And the HCC <coughs> and the TUSLA as well, they can have different guidelines in each country and um, like so it's really depending on which country in Europe but yeah most people that I have other friends as well that are that from say Lithuania and they're from Romania that they did their level eight in their country but when they came it's actually recognized as level eight but there's still different countries that wouldn't recognize as level eight but they can still work because when you kind of um translator qualification will be level five or level six. Okay, very good, very good. Um, in terms of um, multiculturalism and the mixing of the children, how is that, you know, how does that happen? Is it smooth running, you know, with kids, you know, let's say Irish national children and any other, um, you know, migrant? Yeah, um, from the eight years that I've been working in childcare, I haven't um, experienced a child being, you know, discriminated because of where they're from. Children are very um, welcoming. Uh, once there's, they don't show difference. Um, I actually believe that it's more if the actual child um, feels different, it's because it's from outside crash. But we haven't really experienced a case that one or another child is different uh, race or different, uh, you know, background, and they make a difference. They, the only people will say, oh, even they will actually embrace and say, oh, I, I would love to have um, that kind of hair. For example, we have a couple of African children that will wear braids, and um, they obviously they will make a difference. Oh, she has lovely hair. But they wouldn't say like, oh, I will, I'm not going to play with her because she has a different type of hair. Okay, mm. wonderful. So we can actually see and confirm that, you know, children, children wouldn't make that difference. No. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so, um, uh, Maria, tell, you know, tell us more about um, the culture or the value in culture. You say that you even ask parents in terms of um, wanting to know about their culture. Why do you think that's important? It's, um, it's very important because um, it's to make the, the Gazawa crashes, it's not, like I said, it's not really to teach the children how to behave, it's how to find their place, how to make them feel at home. So if we have events, activities that they will enjoy, they want to come back. So if we show interest in them, and also for us it's good as well to learn, because sometimes we might want to do a certain activity and we don't understand why the child is not interacting with, the, with that kind of, uh, of activity. But once we you know, communicate with the parent and ask, we're trying to do this if, you know, activity, but the child is not interacting, they say, oh no, that's because we never done it at home, or we don't agree with that at home. And also with parents, um, they will have like they might not believe in God or they might not believe in Christmas they won't believe in Halloween so we have as, as staff we have to respect that but we also have to include the children and how we do that is 
we can be doing like say a Halloween activity, but we can also do a, the kind of similar activity, but doesn't include Halloween pictures, if you know what I mean. Okay, yeah. okay. so everybody still feel included, even yeah. though cultures are different and you're exactly. celebrating different mm -hmm. cultures and values yeah. from different children. Okay, very good. So when you are uh, developing this awareness, for, you know, with children, obviously you are um, um, making sure that everybody's mingled and is acceptable as well, you know. As Do the parents ever come and enjoy these activities? Um, yes, we usually have um, special events that parents can come. The last few uh, years we didn't because of the situation with COVID. And we also have graduations for those who are moving to each room. So from baby room to say um, play group, we'll have a mini ceremony and we have a little party. We'll have a slide with, you know, um, pictures that of activities we've done previously. Parents can come in and see the artwork that we've done during the year. And actually during the year from September to June, each room has to do, say, it's called a journal. So every activity is um, documented in this journal. And after, say, every month, we have to do observations according to those um, activities. So at the end of the year, each parent can take that home in the graduation. They take that home. They will see the progress from the day one that they came in and from the last day. And some parents, actually, they say that they keep, um, you know, this uh, folder, those journals, from just to see the programs as they go to each rooms. So it's really good to, to bring the parents, you know, to, for them to see what not only we are just playing with them, but what the progress, progress that, they, they, that they do. And it's important as well to do this progress because it's affecting their social, their physical, you know, their mental, uh, social development, you know. Okay, very good. With so much difference in culture, let's say, how do you handle when a child comes, you know, comes to, you know, to the crash? It's always sad, it's always, you know, crying, or doesn't want to be partaken of that, or seems to be fearful. How do you take, yeah, you know, we, to try yeah, to solve we have, that situation? Um, we call that separation anxiety, and we, what we do is, for that not to happen, we have a thing called weaning. So basically, if there's a new child coming in, um, the parent can come in with them for the first day for 10 to 15 minutes and we show them the garden, we show them the room that they'll be. Then the next day we'll increase to say 20 minutes. Then the next day we we'll increase to half an hour and so on. And until the child is, you know, comfortable, comfortable enough to, mm -hmm. to stay in with, with us. And, and we try to always keep the same. We have a thing called key workers. So in each room we have a key for each child so that the child will be able to feel comfortable with that particular staff member as well, so that there's not only always changing the staff. And yeah, so that's basically, we have the, the winning process. It takes maybe two weeks. Some children, they, the mother says, I need two weeks, but when the child is there, they're fine. You know, they can start the next day. Some children need the week, so it's really depending on the child. The child, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So we have that process, yeah. And do you ever have um, to deal with um, children that are being abused at home? Um, I haven't experienced that um, in like myself, but I have heard of uh, situations. And when that, uh, when we are worried, the first person to call is Tusla. And normally, because we are just childcare providers, we will just give the information the event that we have noticed and then they will follow up okay will it not be possible for you to actually approach the parent first before you go first to tusla uh, it's really depending on the situation if you really worried about because a lot of the cases that happened past in the past years when you con communicate with the parents they will deny so we don't look mostly at the parents as well we consider more of the child. So if you think that the child is in a, a risk in some way, you need to contact a, a authority first. Okay. Yeah. And then do you investigate by questioning the child or you just uh, formulate uh, an idea and then contact No, the, basically what happens is when Tusla is contacted, 
too slow as it comes to the to the crash at first and the parents is contact and say look we're gonna be in the room and we're gonna look at your child observe basically you know mm -hmm. and they don't they don't they don't usually talk to the child until they can themselves mm -hmm. notice uh, and how how we can tell as well is sometimes if the the child is constantly coming with, you know, dirty clothes, you know, always when we are saying the child needs this and the parent is not showing eager, you know, to put the place, to bring in the stuff that they need and always with cuts, you know, bumps. And when we ask the child, they say one thing and then the parents say one thing. And that's when we start in documenting in our you know journals and mm -hmm. because when you're contacting the HSC and the TUSLA we have to be very careful as well because sometimes it could be just you know the, the parent doesn't have the time could have the parent could have six seven children mm -hmm. trying to get you know everybody ready to go one to the you know the crash one to primary school one to secondary school so we have also have to be careful that we're not looking just for you know something wrong but to to make sure that what we're seeing is not what's there. Okay. So that's why we contact the authority force. They will come in, check it out. And if they think then that, okay, no, there's an is issue there, and they come maybe uh, every three days then just to see if the situation continues, and then they'll contact the parents, and then they will have a meeting with the social workers who will be involved, and you know. Uh, but it really depends on the situation. Okay. Children also, they have a very big imagination. I have a case um, uh, that I've, a little boy would go and tell the mother that he, you know, is never able to play with a laptop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for two weeks, he would be saying that and it would be so sad at home. And, be, and then when the mother then goes and confronts the school, she's been told that there's no laptop for the children. Yeah. And then... Um, you know, the child is asked, yeah. you know, show us a laptop. And it's actually an imaginary thing yeah. that it brings in. Yeah. So is it possible that a child also could be um, imagining or creating a story based on something that they must have fell or something that had happened and you see bruises on them or there's this kind of um, detachment that they feel or they, they show um, negative um, emotions while they're in the crash? Yeah, that's why we have the observations. The observations are done, uh, could be done daily, could be done weekly. Um, so these observations are basically according to the activities that we do. So we will know the child by, for example, if you have the child over a year or even two, two three months, by you doing the observing, by the child being under your care, you will know the type of child you have. So if a parent comes and complains or says, look, um, system social saying this and that, we will be able to go back into our observations and say, oh no, he ha he's very, you know, imaginative or he's just playing around. Because there are children as well that they have the stage that can be, we call it telltales, that they will say that they did something but they didn't, you know, just to get that attention, attention from the seeking. key worker. Mm. And some children will get jealous because we are, say, doing an activity with one particular child because of what you know their needs to do it and they did it already and they say oh no I didn't do that yet but we know that they did it already mm -hmm. so that's when we have to be very careful that when we are with the children we have to observe them we have checklists you know in place you know that we will know that like, there's no the, a child cannot say to a parent that something happened and then come back to us and then we're like, oh no, we, we don't know about it. Because everything has to be, by the policies, everything that we do, well, we think that, even things that they say, if they say something that you think that it's really appropriate, we have to write it down. Write it down, okay. And Record yeah, it. yeah, and yeah. Fantastic, okay. Is there anything as, you know, is it something or is it such a thing as a difficult child? Um, no, we we wouldn't say difficult child. We say challenging ch child. Mm. So even like the change of the word. Yeah. So even like um, kids, we we are not allowed to um, say a, as a child, as a kid, because as we know, it's a baby goat. So we really have to be have different ways to say. Um, 
since you know when you're working we with children you have your stress obviously but when you actually working for such a long time you 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 won't even realize that that child is you know challenging because you'll always find a different way that's is, that's is important to know the background of the child mm -hmm. the communications between you and the parents as well it's very important because if you know that this particular child is challenging you will be prepared you know okay. it, for the day yeah for the day and uh, there will be for example if you have water play and that particular child when touches water goes really you know it's uncomfortable has sensory issues you have to find a different activities that they can do at the same time if but with water but just in a different way that they wouldn't feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Yeah. very good okay and what about children with disability do you as a crash accept um you know children with disability or you just um you know take on children you know able children no we have yeah our policy is any any child is welcome because we believe that children are the future and um, not the the um, the parents actually choose whether to bring them to crash or to special schools uh, in the crash that i'm in at the moment we have special needs children in in maybe two to three rooms so you know and we also have aims the government provides aims so we can have snas in the crash uh, also aim as well, which is someone that has child care you know um qualification. qualification but also has the sna qualification or even the you know special needs qualification so in every you know every room if they have one if you have the aim uh, staff there it's you know we are more than welcome to receive so we have no thing no rejection to to say no to them they're okay. more than welcome yeah oh amazing fantastic yeah. maria gloria yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. It has been such a, you know, delightful um, conversation no, thank and you a for topic, um, you know, for having, you know, um, for you to be able to come here and expose, um, the, you know, the simplicity of, ha you know, children, especially in childcare, that you get to notice yeah. that there's no such a thing as a difference or dis discrimination. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Um, you've been watching uh, CSI. I had Maria as my guest, and we we're talking about childcare. If you have a story that you would like to share with us, please do contact CSI or in our social medias. Thank you so much for watching. This is Luzia. Hi, I'm Helen. Hey, I'm Candy. Hi, I'm Michael. Hi, I'm Ivy. And this is Luzia. Thank you for watching CSI. Make sure to subscribe to CSI Common Society. And remember to hit that notification bell. Thank you.